Did you know that every three minutes someone develops dementia globally, and that Alzheimer's disease, not a normal part of aging, is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States? Alzheimer's disease, or AD, is a formidable health challenge that we face today. It's not just about forgetting where you left your keys or missing a lunch date. It's a progressive neurodegenerative disease that can drastically affect a person's life. It's characterized by a steady decline in memory, cognitive function, and even changes in behavior and personality. And here's the kicker, it doesn't have to be an inevitable part of getting older. While it's true that the risk of Alzheimer's increases with age, it's not a normal part of aging. In fact, it's believed that many cases can be prevented with the right lifestyle choices. Now imagine this. Every three minutes, a new individual is thrust into this reality, joining the millions already grappling with the disease. By the year 2050, an estimated 152 million people worldwide will be living with some form of dementia. That's a number almost equivalent to half the current population of the United States. In the U.S. alone, Alzheimer's ranks as the sixth leading cause of death overall and climbs to the fifth spot for those aged 65 and older. These figures underscore the seriousness of Alzheimer's disease, the urgency of the situation and the need for effective prevention and treatment strategies. Now that we understand the enormity of the problem, let's delve into the risk factors. Risk factors for dementia can be categorized into two types, modifiable and non-modifiable. But what does that mean? Well, non-modifiable risk factors are those that we cannot change. These include age, genetics, gender, and family history of dementia. For example, as we age, our risk for Alzheimer's increases, and if we have a close relative with Alzheimer's, our chances of developing the disease are higher. On the other hand, modifiable risk factors are aspects of our lifestyle that we can control. These include smoking, head injuries, certain environmental factors, and metabolic syndrome, often referred to as METSIS. So, let's take a closer look at METSIS. It's a cluster of conditions that occur together, increasing your risk for heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. These conditions include increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol or triglyceride levels. But here's the kicker. METSIS is also a risk factor for dementia. Yes, you heard that right. Alzheimer's disease is not just a memory disorder, it's also a metabolic issue. This stems from the brain's inability to harness energy from glucose effectively, leading to a decline in cognitive function. The good news? Many of these modifiable risk factors are within our control. By making conscious lifestyle choices, we can potentially lower our risk of developing Alzheimer's. This includes maintaining a healthy weight, controlling blood sugar levels, exercising regularly, and making smart dietary choices. So the question is, can we modify our diet to combat Alzheimer's? The answer might surprise you. Alzheimer's disease is not just a memory issue, it's a metabolic issue. But how does diet come into play here? Let's get into it. Alzheimer's disease, or AD, is a progressive neurodegenerative disease. It's characterized by a decline in memory and cognitive function, along with changes in behavior and personality. But did you know that at its core, AD is a metabolic issue? That's right. This devastating disease stems from the brain's inability to harness energy from glucose. You see, our brains need fuel to function properly. Usually, this fuel comes from glucose. However, in the case of Alzheimer's, the brain struggles to use this glucose effectively. This leads to a kind of energy starvation, which in turn leads to the symptoms we associate with Alzheimer's. Now you might be wondering, how does this connect to diet? Well, here's the thing. There's a condition known as type 3 diabetes or diabetes of the brain. This condition is closely related to insulin resistance, a metabolic disorder where the body struggles to use insulin effectively. So what does insulin have to do with Alzheimer's? Insulin is not just about controlling sugar levels in the body. It also plays a role in the formation of beta amyloid plaques, a defining feature of Alzheimer's disease. When insulin resistance occurs, it can lead to an increase in these plaques, contributing to the development and progression of Alzheimer's. And here's where diet comes in. Certain dietary choices can contribute to insulin resistance and type 3 diabetes, increasing the risk of Alzheimer's. On the other hand, making healthier dietary choices can help manage insulin levels, potentially reducing the risk of Alzheimer's. So in essence, Alzheimer's disease is not just about memory, it's about metabolism. 
It's about how our brains use energy and how our dietary choices can impact this process. Now let's explore how dietary changes can help reduce the risk of Alzheimer's disease. What if there was a way to provide an alternate fuel source to the brain? Enter the carnivore diet. The carnivore diet, a dietary plan that primarily includes meats and animal products, might just be the key to unlocking a new approach to Alzheimer's prevention. This diet, along with other low-carb diets such as keto, works by restricting carbohydrate intake. Now you might be wondering, how does this help with Alzheimer's? Let's break it down. Alzheimer's disease at its core is a metabolic issue. It stems from the brain's inability to harness energy from glucose. This is where the carnivore diet comes into play. By restricting carbohydrates, we limit the body's glucose supply. This forces the body to switch to a different fuel source, ketones, which are derived from fats. Here's where it gets interesting. The brain can use these ketones as an alternative source of energy. In fact, some studies suggest that ketones are a more efficient fuel for the brain than glucose. By providing the brain with this alternate fuel source, we could potentially alleviate the metabolic dysfunction that contributes to Alzheimer's. But it's not just about providing an alternate fuel source. The carnivore diet also addresses another key player in Alzheimer's insulin. Insulin resistance, often referred to as type 3 diabetes or diabetes of the brain, has been linked to Alzheimer's. Insulin plays a role in the formation of beta amyloid plaques, a defining feature of Alzheimer's. By reducing carbohydrate intake, we can improve insulin sensitivity and potentially reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. The science behind this is still emerging, but the evidence so far is promising. A study published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease found that a ketogenic diet improved cognitive function in Alzheimer's patients. Another study in the current Alzheimer Research Journal reported similar findings, with patients showing improved memory performance after following a low-carb, high-fat diet. Now it's important to note that a carnivore diet might not be for everyone and it's always important to consult with a healthcare professional before making drastic dietary changes. But if we can help correct metabolic dysfunction and provide an alternate fuel source for the brain, then this diet could potentially be a game changer. The carnivore diet could be a game changer for preventing or even reversing Alzheimer's symptoms. So let's keep our minds open and our plates full of nutrient-dense foods. After all, our brains are worth it. For those interested in a deeper dive, there's a fantastic resource called The Alzheimer's Antidote by Amy Berger. This insightful book serves as an excellent guide for those seeking to comprehend the complex relationship between diet and Alzheimer's. The book's central premise revolves around the idea that Alzheimer's, often dubbed as type 3 diabetes, is not simply a byproduct of aging, but a metabolic issue that can be influenced by our dietary choices. In The Alzheimer's Antidote, Amy Berger puts forth compelling evidence on how a low-carb diet can act as a preventive measure against the onset of Alzheimer's. She delves into the science behind our body's metabolic processes, shedding light on how the brain's inability to harness energy from glucose leads to cognitive decline. Berger suggests that by adopting a low-carb diet, we can provide an alternate fuel source for the brain, potentially mitigating the risks associated with Alzheimer's. The book offers a comprehensive understanding of how dietary changes can play a significant role in preventing or even reversing Alzheimer's symptoms. It explores the benefits of a ketogenic or carnivore diet in rectifying metabolic dysfunction, underscoring the importance of carbohydrate restriction. Berger's work is an invaluable tool for anyone seeking to understand Alzheimer's and the potential power of dietary intervention. In her book, you'll find a wealth of information from the fundamentals of Alzheimer's disease to practical dietary advice backed by scientific research. It serves as a beacon of hope, illuminating the path towards Alzheimer's prevention through dietary changes. Remember, it's never too early to start taking steps to prevent Alzheimer's. The key lies in early prevention and making informed dietary choices. So delve deeper, arm yourself with knowledge and take control of your health. After all, our diet is more than just fuel for our bodies. It's a crucial line of defense in the battle against Alzheimer's. We've covered a lot today, from the risk factors of Alzheimer's to the potential benefits of the carnivore diet. We've explored how Alzheimer's disease, a progressive neurodegenerative condition, is not just an inevitable part of aging, 
but can be influenced by several modifiable factors, including dietary choices. We've learned that this disease, the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, and a major concern for those over 65, is not merely about memory decline, cognitive function decline, and changes in behavior and personality. It's fundamentally a metabolic issue, a result of the brain's inability to harness energy from glucose effectively. This understanding brings us to the connection between Alzheimer's and what is called type 3 diabetes or diabetes of the brain, a condition related to insulin resistance that can potentially lead to Alzheimer's. Insulin, as we've discussed, plays a role in the formation of beta amyloid plaques, a defining feature of Alzheimer's. But it's not all doom and gloom. We've discussed that dietary changes, particularly carbohydrate restriction through a carnivore, keto, or ketosis-inducing diet, can help correct metabolic dysfunction and provide an alternate fuel source for the brain. This can play a significant role in preventing or even reversing Alzheimer's symptoms. And for those looking for more information, we've recommended The Alzheimer's Antidote by Amy Berger, a book that provides more insights into Alzheimer's prevention through a low-carb diet. So as we wrap up, let's remind ourselves, early prevention is crucial. Small, initially unnoticeable changes in the brain can lead to this debilitating disease, but with the right dietary choices, we can potentially lower the risk. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on this video if you found it helpful, and be sure to subscribe to Remedy Seeker for more health tips and remedies. See you in the next video.